Hello and welcome to the world of Android. Today I'm going to be going over uh, Android, the Android platform. I'm going to be going over open source and the older versions of Android. So you guys can have a little bit more of the history of Android for our newcomers. Alright, Android platform. Basically it's a Linux based operating system for smartphones and tablets um, that was developed um, by an open source, by Open Handset Alliance, led by Google. If you guys didn't know. Um, so, yeah, Linux, you know, like Ubuntu and all the other crazy crap. Um, not crap, they're, they're good, I use them too. Um, Linux based systems. Um, another thing is open source. Open source is basically something that they have for that Google had made so that developers can use Google's source, uh, source code. So therefore that when Google comes out with a new kernel or a new major update, for instance, like Ice Cream Sandwich that just came out, they would release it to the public so then the developers can take that, use it, um, modify it so that it'll fit the phone that you're using, and then you can use it and you have Ice Cream Sandwich before even your phone over the air um, even do the updates and they'll, and they'll always constantly come out with a new update because that's what developers do. Um, Android versions. I had the original old um, G1, aka the Dream Phone. Um, I've most recently updated, not updated, but um, upgraded multiple times. I've had the Samsung Vibrant. Um, I currently have now the Dual Core. HTC Sensation, which is overclocked with uh, Android Revolution HD, running with Beats Audio on it, so I don't have to get a Beats Audio phone, I already have it on there. Imported, eventually I'll probably update to the Ice Cream Sandwich, which I've been hearing a lot of bugs about it, so I'll wait for them to tweak it out before I even go on to it. Um, but the, the versions of Android, to get back into that. Um, if you guys didn't know, there was 1.1, which was vanilla. Then after that, then there was 1.5, which was cupcake. And then after that, there was donut, which was 1.6. And after that, there was uh, Froyo, which was ice cream. No, Eclair. Yeah, Eclair, which was 2.1. And then Froyo, which was 2.2. Then there was gingerbread, which was 2.3. And then there was, just for the tablets, when it came, when the tablets first started coming out, there was Honeycomb. And then, now most recently, there's 4.0, which is Ice Cream Sandwich, or ICS. A lot of people try to get those. Um, I might get it eventually when they start getting all the bugs out of it to try it out. Um, I heard that there's a lot of good stuff about it. So, if you guys didn't know nothing about the history, that was uh, pretty much a brief history about it um, for everybody that's who's now starting to get into Android and I always get a lot of questions. Um, the next video I do will be going over root, what is root, um, the advantages of having a custom ROM on there and everything else that goes along with having root. So hope you guys enjoyed this episode and hope to see you in the next one. Alright, take care. Welcome to Android Weekly on Butterscotch.com, the show that roots through the different versions of Android to tell you what they mean to you. Seriously, it's not a stray metaphor. That's what we're tackling this week. I'm Andrew Moore Kirsten. We're charting the course from the original shaky Android builds through Cupcake, Donut, and into Gingerbread and beyond, and look at what's next with Ice Cream Sandwich. On to the revision history. The first Android version to hit the consumer level was 1.0, which debuted on the HTC Dream. Not a bad phone or a bad version of Android, but it had a lot of growing up to do. 1.0 introduced the Android market, which was pretty anemic at the time. It also brought the pull-down notification bar we're all familiar with. It had a media player, which was pretty terrible. The real killer app here was Google Sync. For those who had already converted over to Google Apps for their calendar, documents, maps, email, IM, chat, and so on, its imperfections could be forgiven. No copy and paste, though. 1.1 was mostly bug fixes and still offered no way to copy and paste. 
It did, however, bring with it an improved map apps with local search and business listings, complete with reviews and other relevant data. 1.5 is where it starts to get interesting. Widgets made their first appearance in Android 1.5, aka Cupcake. It's also where the unique dessert-based Android naming convention began. Android's media playback improved immensely. Copy and paste made its first appearance in the browser, and your phone pulled Google account pictures of your friends into your contact list. There were other improvements too, but the most interesting among them was the option to select a different software keyboard. This leading to the rise of apps like Swipe. 1.6, aka Donut, introduced the free turn-by-turn -turn navigation app that is now a major selling factor for Android smartphones. I remember using it and being somewhat less than impressed at the time. It's come a long way since then, and even then it was better than nothing for weary travelers. 2.0 and 2.1 both live under the name Eclair, which is a bit strange given that other updates have and continue to get their own dessert-based names. Eclair added a much improved keyboard and autocorrect. It brought some much needed improvements to the camera including white balance, macro focus and scene modes. HTML5 support was added to the browser and the live wallpapers feature of Android that we all know and that some of us love came on board too. 2.2 or Froyo brought with it the most improvements up to that point. Adobe Flash support and batch and automatic updating to the Android market both made an appearance. The single biggest improvement though was the addition of USB and wireless tethering. Wireless tethering allows Froyo users whose carriers don't block the service to turn their phones into a wireless hotspot. It's a handy feature that saves Android users seeking out a Starbucks when they need to get their laptops online. 2.3 Gingerbread is the current version of Android. It brought with it native support for internet calling over SIP, some equalization options for listening to music, and support for the front-facing cameras, which have since proliferated. More to the point though, it added Near Field Communication, or NFC. While it's of limited use for most Android users as yet, it hints at the fact that Google wants its phone to also be your wallet. 2.4 Ice Cream Sandwich. This is what we're waiting for. We got some hints as to what Ice Cream Sandwich will do, and it sounds pretty tasty. Honeycomb, Android 3.0, throws users for a bit of a loop. Android developers too, as it means there are two distinct versions of Android that have to be accounted for. Ice Cream Sandwich looks to bring Android tablet and Android smartphone development back into one. At Google I.O. we saw a silly addition that brings photo booth-like face warping filters. Also we saw a useful virtual camera operator that is smart enough to focus attention in a group video chat on the person that's currently speaking. It's dubbed the One OS that runs everywhere and it will release in fourth quarter, likely on the rumored Nexus Prime smartphone that we talked about a few episodes back. Well, that's a rundown on Android versions today.